In this episode of the Dandy Fun House, we're going to look ahead to the great new amusements coming in 2023 from the worlds of theme parks, pinball, toys, board games, and movies. I'm also going to share my favorite episodes from 2022 and let you know what's been going on behind the scenes over here and uh, where things are headed. It's not going to be a best of year-end roundup most shows churn out this time of year as easy content. I wouldn't cheat like that. Good stuff ahead. Let's step into the fun house. <laughs> Where am I? You just entered the Dandy Funhouse. Hello and welcome to the Dandy Funhouse, the home of your favorite frivolities. I'm your host, Neil Dandy, and 2022 has been very, very good to me. I'm currently on kind of a holiday staycation, doing a three-day getaway to a cabin in Lynchburg, Tennessee. That's right, the home of Jack Daniels, but... We're actually holed up in a cabin in single-degree weather with a stockpile of snacks, Wi-Fi, and cable TV just 45 minutes from home in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Emma Lou the Dandy Dog is here as well. She's in the other room sleeping. I figured what better way to wrap up the year than to bring you a forecast of the best frivolities on the horizon for 2023. So let's get to it. And we're going to start with theme parks. Okay, this theme park overview is not going to include roller coasters. Why? Well... Everybody and their brother is opening a new roller coaster in 2023, and there's an endless amount of shows out there that cover them. It's like most theme parks can't think of anything else to do. I like coasters as much as the next guy, but at some point, it gets old. They lift you up, hurdle you down a track, spin you, loop you, and there you go. My goal here at the Fun House is to bring you things that I think are fresh and exciting and interesting, and it doesn't get much more fresh and interesting than... Katmandu Park in Punta Cana, Dominican Republic. It's going to hold the distinction as the Caribbean's first top flight theme park. It's going to be centered around the characters of the Katmandu Fantastical Universe, and it's only going to be available to guests staying at the Falcons Resort there, but tickets are included with your guest reservation. So if you find yourself planning a trip to the Dominican, this might be something to check out in your travel plans. Bush Gardens, Tampa Bay, Florida. The Serengeti Flyer, a high-velocity screaming swing ride that takes you 135 feet high at 68 miles an hour. Okay, that's not exactly groundbreaking, but, you know, it's not a roller coaster. And Busch Gardens in Williamsburg, Virginia, is permanently closing their mock tower. The massive drop tower, which has been plagued with constant maintenance issues since its opening in 2011. In fact, the only thing that was ever newsworthy about the mock tower would be the rare occasions when it was actually open and operating. Good riddance, mock tower. Universal Studios Florida, Villain Con Minion Blast. It's going to be a motion-based pathway attraction where you get to compete to become a member of Despicable Me's Vicious Six. That sounds like fun. Universal Studios Hollywood is getting a new augmented reality ride for Mario Kart called Bowser's Challenge. I like augmented reality ride when they're done well. I mean, Spider-Man at Universal's Islands of Adventure, I like that one a lot. It makes you feel like you're right in the middle of everything. And it's really amazing what they can do. Universal Studios Singapore, Minion Park, a Despicable Me theme land. Now let's move on to Penball. Coming in 2023, I have a nice list of rumored releases. I've whittled them down to ones that aren't just new releases of themes that are already out there for the most part. These are ones I uncovered that really seem exciting to me, and I hope you feel the same. Over at Stern, Foo Fighters, He-Man, Venom, and Cobra Kai. A little surprise, the Foos haven't had their own pinball machine yet, but kudos to Dave Grohl, Pat Smear, and the boys. I'm looking forward to it. Jersey Jack Pinball's got Elton John, Van Halen, Journey, and Billy Joel. Pretty certain Van Halen and uh, Journey have had to have their own pinball machines in the past, but not sure about Elton John and Billy Joel. Those seem interesting. I guess Jersey Jack Pinball is kind of all about dad rock. Well, that's okay. I like dad rock. American Pinball. Galactic Tank Force, Wrath of Olympus, and Robin Hood, all rumored for 2023. Spooky Pinball, Scooby-Doo, and Evil Dead. I guess they're into Halloween or something over there at Spooky. Chicago Gaming Company, Pulp Fiction. I'm wondering if the launcher is going to be a giant adrenaline needle. Haggis Pinball, War of the Worlds, Centaur, Medusa. It's interesting how these different manufacturers seem to have their own, like, unique 
pocket of interest. And rounding out our 2023 forecast for Pinball, and segueing us nicely into our next segment, there's actually a movie called Pinball, The Man Who Saved the Game, being released on St. Patrick's Day. It's about one man's fight in New York to legalize the game, which was outlawed as illegal gambling from the 40s through the mid-70s, and I never knew that Pinball was outlawed. I might have to check that one out. And, of course, that brings us to Movies! Now, in addition to the aforementioned movie Pinball, other ones I'm looking forward to in 2023 would be The Flash. Now, this is going to be, of course, about the classic comic book character. And I'm a little burned out on the whole superhero thing, but The Flash was one of my favorites as a kid. So I'm glad to see him getting his due. And I'll be there with my refillable popcorn bucket, and I hope you will too. Dune Part 2. Generally don't get crazy about sequels, but part one left me wanting more, especially since we only had about five minutes of Zendaya. The original Dune bored me to tears, but, you know, I was pretty young and I had a short attention span. Uh, But I did like the remake, and I'm ready for more. Bring on the Dune! Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mutant Mayhem. It's the freaking Ninja Turtles! What more you need? Uh, This might be one of those rare occasions that I'll actually buy a pizza at a movie. I never do that. And Barbie. All I know is that this is going to be a comedy with Margot Robbie, Will Ferrell, and Ryan Gosling. As long as she doesn't do that annoying Harley Quinn voice, I don't think this one can go wrong. Wonka. Now, this is going to be a prequel about how a young Willy Wonka met and enslaved a race of people known as the Oompa Loompas. I'm sure that's not how it's framed, but I mean, come on. I think this could go either way. We've already seen how bad a Wonka movie can be with Johnny Depp and Tim Burton's version. And it was an unmitigated disaster. Totally creepy. But I really hope that they get this one right. I don't expect it to reach the level of the original. I don't see how anything could. But, I mean, just don't torch my childhood memories to the ground anymore. That's all I'm asking here. And Chicken Run, Dawn of the Nugget. This is going to be the sequel you weren't sure you wanted, but you're apparently going to get anyway. And lastly, but not leastly, Super Mario Brothers starring Chris Pratt. No synopsis yet, just marinate on that thought for a moment. Super Mario Brothers with Chris Pratt. And in the world of toys, not much new under the sun. Most of the toys in the outlook for 2023 are... Really variations on existing themes, but some of the more interesting things I found included 3D printers for kids, child-sized robot playmates, and robotic dinosaurs you can ride. I'm not sure if I'm excited, disturbed, or both. More than a few parents, probably going to get used to sleeping with one eye open in the new year. And that brings us to board games coming in 2023. Pandemic Legacy. Players compete to stop the spread of deadly diseases. Code names. This is going to be a card game where players form teams and collect clues through the cards to try and guess each other's team's code names while trying to avoid assassins. Sounds espionage. Betrayal at the House on Haunted Hill. Players explore a haunted house together, but at some point one of the players becomes co-opted and joins the forces of darkness while everyone else tries to conquer their former ally. Sounds like some friendships I had this past year. And Wingspan, this is going to be one where players are bird enthusiasts, and they try to acquire new birds for their habitats, and different acquisitions get you different abilities, and I guess you get a monopoly over the industry of bird trading. I I don't know who came up with this one, I'm just trying to picture the brainstorm session, and I can't, but you know, what the heck, I'd play it. And moving on to our wrap-up for 2022. Now the Dandy Funhouse, it's a fairly new venture, just two years old at this point, And it's a monthly release because that's all I can do without it taking over all of my life and where I can keep it and enjoy doing it without burning out. And it proved to be a great year of establishing and better defining what it is that I do here and how I want to present it and where it's going. This past year, I was able to uncover the bombshell news that had been lightly percolating behind the scenes in industry circles, but it hadn't been announced to the world yet. I'm speaking about the expected return of the Ringling Brothers and Barnum & Bailey Circus. Now, you may recall about six years ago, Ringling took the big top down, a mixed animal rights activist getting on their case, and low attendance. And I'll be interested to see what they come up with. 
here. Uh, now, hopefully, they'll modernize some things and bring the circus up to date. Just hope they don't try to be Cirque du Soleil. Hopefully, they'll go for more of a Monster Jam vibe and make something real thrilling and in your face. You know, the age of clowns and squirting flowers might have come and gone, and we'll see. My dog, Emma Lou, she hosted episode 17 to tell you all about the top 10 dog-friendly attractions in America. That one ended up being the worst performing episode of the year, by far, and I think it's because I had to revise the episode and remove a destination from the list that turned out, despite many reports to the contrary, to not actually allow dogs at all. I think the algorithms of the interwebs didn't really like me revamping it, and it suffered in the search results, but I was still happy to have Emma Lou guest host an episode. And also, I was happy to feature her in my last episode where I showed you the game of Soggy Doggy, and I gave her a bath right there in the episode. It was a lot of fun. Check it out if you get a chance. And speaking of guest hosts, the Dandy Funhouse was also honored to have the legendary Count Drahoon of Count Drahoon's Feature of Fright podcast guest host our Halloween episode in October and judge the ultimate classic monster serial showdown. Now, even though he relocated to California, he found himself briefly back in Tennessee to collect a few items he left behind and graciously carved out a few hours to help shoot my most ambitiously produced episode to date. Now, the best performing episodes of 2022, they were the unboxing, assemblies, and review of games like Mousetrap and Soggy Doggy. I don't know why, but apparently you guys like those type of run-and-gun, low-production quality episodes rather than the more highly produced green screen ones. I'm still going to make the ambitious productions, though, because I like the challenge and they make me a better content creator. But I have certainly taken note. You have spoken and I am hearing you. A lot of this past year has also been spent strengthening the underlying infrastructure of not just the show, but the internet platform it's built on. The hosting of the podcast version was migrated from Libsyn to Blueberry earlier in the year, because Blueberry is more in line with what I'm all about, which is building my house on my own infrastructure as opposed to what amounts to rented land. Basically, with Blueberry, I provide them my RSS feed, which I own, and it's the web address that makes the podcast work. This is the web address the different applications look for to find your show. I wanted that to be my address instead of one that was assigned to me by a hosting platform. Because when and if the day comes that I leave that platform, I don't want someone else having sway over my show's internet address. And Libsyn says you can take it with you when you go, but it's an address they give you. And, you know, I don't like that. Someone could come along, change the policy in the future, and hold my show hostage. That's a situation I don't want to be in. I've also been undergoing a very painful web hosting transition from GoDaddy to my new host, A2, who has been wonderful. GoDaddy thought it'd be a great idea to force all their customers who have email associated with their websites to switch to Microsoft Exchange, and they only gave us two weeks' notice. Now, in my case, this wreaked havoc on uh, one of the businesses I've had for almost 20 years because I use the Google platform for everything, Gmail, Calendar, Google Drive, and it runs almost every aspect of my business. I use mail labels to organize all the communications, Google Drive for all the documents, contracts, venue policies, playlists, insurance forms, timelines, and I keep a unique folder for every event on my calendar And when something comes to my email with a document attached that's important for the event, I just click on it and send it straight to its folder in Google Drive. And then I send that email to go live under the special Gmail label I created just for that event. Well, to make a long and painful story shorter, Microsoft Exchange doesn't play nice with any of that, and I can't conduct my business workflow in the way that I've built. And as a result, GoDaddy threw a big wrench into every way I conduct my business, and I don't appreciate it. My DJ business currently produces about half my yearly income, so I had to make this very painful change away from GoDaddy because of what they did to me. And, well, my new web host, A2, they've been excellent. Great customer service, and 
they've made the transition as painless as possible. I've got several websites currently on the way there. Dandy Funhouse just finished going over there, and the downtime was minimal. Thanks, A2. Your hands-on customer service has been much appreciated. And no thanks, GoDaddy. I still have a few websites to take away from you, but we're breaking up. It's not me. It's you. And that's going to do it here for the year 2022. Thank you for hanging out and having a frivolous 22 with me. I look forward to new and exciting adventures in 2023. So come back next month and kick the year off right at the Dandy Funhouse, where everything is always fun and dandy. Oh, my God.